Right, to the flag. Yeah, it's Church of America. There are no people here for public input. I don't think you need to read. Okay, then we will pass on that. Going through the minutes of November 4th. At the top, it's nitpicking. There's a space between the on November 4th, her sign. All right. Yes, if he's far away. <laughs> Anybody see anything needs to be corrected? If not, somebody like to make any motion? We can second the meeting. I'll second it. Seven, you second yeah. it. Okay, all those in favor? I was not here. Abstain? Okay, so we have. Oh, we only have four. Can they not? No, we have a good. Oh, sorry. Travis, okay. Travis, are you in favor? Yes. Yeah, go. Okay. Next is the October financial summary. Okay, have you guys been able to pull that up to look at it? Let me find what I did with this one. Again, I think every month it's been nicely sort of on track. We don't have any um, unexpected expenditures. Um, and it basically sort of flows nicely with the remaining amounts of the school year. I just have a question. Sure. Fund balance, it says what was appropriated and what were conceived, and then it's zero. Have we used it all? Or balance is then used? We haven't used any. Balance to be collected. So we don't have any to collect because we actually have, right, it's, we had a fund balance of 1.6, and we have that fund balance of 1.6, so there's no extra out there. Um, but should it say 100% is remained? Well, we no. I think it's the balance to be collected and the percent to be collected. I think. Right. Yeah. So we we have nothing to collect. That's what the zero percent is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Any other questions? No, this is really just um, an update for you guys. Yep. Okay, and policy second reading. These are just hard copies if you need them. These will go in our binders if we get that. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> These were the, the four policies that we looked at when we were discussing public inputs. And so we looked at them as a group of four, and we had an initial meeting with the policy committee, and then, so we made some initial changes. Then we met again last week, and it was Lynn, Lynn and I met to kind of just go through the final parts of them. Mm -hmm. So as of right now, there wasn't, there were, there aren't any changes for the first one, BBA, which is School Board Powers and Responsibilities. That remains as is. So this is not the actual policy, this is just where changes were or were not made. This is the actual policy um, itself. Oh, okay. Um, and we do put revised November 18th just because we're reading it again and we're reinforcing that this is the policy we want to continue. And um, board member code of ethics, if you look at page two of that, there's a strikeout on Q. So that's the change that is being proposed. And I can 
can talk a little bit. I was going to say, why well, sure. I So uh, I think at that when Lynn and I were discussing it, she felt like once we get into the board, we're representing the board and our students, and not just a particular town. So she felt that. But again, this is up for you know, this is a proposal, so you can keep it as is, um, or or make this change. And then, um, so I'll just go through the changes and then we can talk. So then the next policy, public participation at board meetings. We added B, public input must be expressed politically and respectfully, focused on issues and not personalized. Sources may be required for numerical and other plans. So that was the change, but then it changed all the lettering in the other um, areas. Uh, <laughs> In here, the amount of minutes and all that stuff, because you took 21 minutes. We did D. We put three minutes. Because we did not stipulate right. from 15 to 21. Right, right. I'm just trying to see where. So what? Like, it's nice that we say this, but how do you, like, how do you implement this? How do you, you know, because this is not like, you know, we can make a policy for others, but it's, it's clear that, like, we don't necessarily have any way to enforce it. You know, well, Nancy can hit her gavel all she wants, but like, like somebody's up there and it's totally out of control yeah, right. and it's not just telling them to sit down and control. Right. Yeah. What are you gonna do unless you have police here? Right. right. So that's so my I question. It's like I still think it's important to have this, but it's I don't really know right. it's not an enforceable right. thing. You know, it's not like Right, but not gonna, necessarily in the moment unless we anticipate it and then have a police officer here, but there are certain, we can look at after the fact if that person is hostile when they come in, not having them be the present right. for the meetings. I think that it's important to have a policy in place. The enforcement part of it is hard, but at least when, when we're trying to enforce something, we say we're enforcing the policy, blah, blah, blah. And you guys need to, like, if we don't have a policy, then what are we doing? Like, what are we basing our decisions on? Civility. Well, I understand. Respectfulness. Yeah. You know, we should put that in a little thing we write and say before. So I know we talked about 20, the first, the first round being 21 minutes. I'm just trying to see where we can add that. If we still want to add that. I was reading, what, what did you say? Sorry. No, I just said, like, we had talked about, like, the three minutes, seven, if we have a large group, mm -hmm. seven, um, you know, seven opportunities for public input. So that puts it at 20 minutes, 21 minutes. Yeah. So where to add that in here? Yeah. At um, D at the end, something like first public input session will be 21 minutes. And maybe followed by a second one at the end if deemed necessary or something like that. Right. Instead of being necessary, maybe like if, if uh, or it's like someone here would say on my thing. Because what people deem necessary, you know what I mean? Right. Of course, public input will be up to up to 21 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. And then it also says second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we'll make that change. And the last one is KE, so it's public concerns and complaints. And we just did a strike through on the fourth section down. Complaints should not be presented or accepted under public. And again, you can certainly. But most, when they're coming here, they're usually 
commenting on something they don't like. Now you can reflame them. You call it compliant, right. I guess. Well, that's why they come. Mm -hmm. What we probably should say is complaints about administration and staff should not be brought. I mean, that's what we're trying to not let them talk about in public session, right? Where they have to write about it. Well, that's, I think that's already, isn't that in the public, isn't that in the public participation one? Yeah, statements concerning subject matter. So that's already covered. Hmm. Or accepted. It's a funny statement. Like yeah. it's, it's hard to know what the intent of that whole line was. I think it was just. I think the intent was that people shouldn't just come to the board meeting under public input and expect to have everything heard and then resolved. Resolved. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, well, but see, the first. if we even just take that whole. Oh, yeah, I feel like it's addressed in the paragraph before. Already said, you know. And the board chair shall determine whether the complaint should be placed on the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. I would then take out that whole thing because it sort of goes against. Right. Yeah, I think that public input shouldn't be used for the, the complaint part process. I think it needs to go through your typical mm -hmm. protocol. That would be that would be the last step if they did not agree with the superintendent's right. decision. Yeah. Then they could, that would be the last step would be um, to the board meeting if we put it on the agenda, if we agree. But we're saying the public concerns and complaints are different than public input. Yes, it's exactly what we're saying. Yeah. Which I think is why you left it in here, unless we should not be presenting these under public input. Mm -hmm. But maybe if we remove it all together, it's sort of. I'll, I don't know if that's a plus or a minus. <laughs> Eliminating it altogether opens doors. Or... I just think of that we do have people that obviously sit and go through these mm -hmm. policies. Yeah. Oh, okay. So when they get to this and they say that we can, they can't make any complaints, I think that could be taken. Okay, so I do think that we should keep that. I think that line complaints should not be presented. Or accepted under public input. I think that does make sense because it, it then the the line before maybe that needs to be more clear. Where if the complaint remains unresolved at the superintendent's level, the person making the complaint may request the matter be placed on the agenda. But do we need to say may request like ahead of the meeting? So like it's they don't show up at a meeting and request like it's a little right. I don't know. Well, and it's it is at the next regular school board meeting. So, um, oh, okay, yeah. I I would say keep it, the changes as you made them. I agree. I think you got to keep that in there. It protects us on both <laughs> sides. I think. I just forgot you were scared. Of <laughs> Several of us just had a heart attack. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we want to call that as right? Complaints should so, be presented or accepted under public input. Yeah. Right. Should it just get attached <laughs> to the paragraph at the top? But look at the, the next, next paragraph. At all levels right. of the complaint process. Remind me that the first there's no changes on the first. The, all the changes here are are noted with the strike throughs. Correct. Okay. And there was no change at all to the first one. Correct. The very first one was fine. The second one was just a page two, page two in the basket. Here on page two. Oh yeah. And that discussion just occurred around, again, making decisions for, for our students, not just based on town necessarily. Right. Well, but I think each town has unique characteristics mm -hmm. of why North Borough is going to have a severe crowding issue next year. 
And I, you know, if you're from New York, you're going to want to make sure that things are ethical. I just, I mean, I think, yeah, I think we are speaking for all of the children, but, you know, you also have to take into consideration your town's unique problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I do think, though, that this board has always done a really good job of looking at it mm -hmm. as a whole district perspective and supporting each town. So I think that's the overarching goal is that you're representing the whole district. Yes, you're going to speak to your town because they're going to come knock on your door. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, I really feel like this board has done a good job of like looking at the bigger picture. Yeah. How are you feeling about these? Good. Are we voting to accept these changes at this stage, or do we do? This is the second reading, so. Okay. And nothing else. Was anything else added in writing that I didn't quite capture? <laughs> the only thing I have added is that twenty-one minutes. Okay. Yes. Other than that. Yes. Okay. So, B D H public participation at board meetings. D was the first public input session will be up to twenty minutes. That's at the end of the. Meeting. Can I make a motion that we accept the changes to BCA and KE as amended? There's nothing for BDBH, right? But if we could approve those, then we can at least say we were visited it. Okay. Okay. So we put them all together. Yeah, okay. So I will make a motion that we accept the policy for BBA, BCA, BEDH, and KE. As amended. For those that are amended, yes. yes. I'm going to say as presented. As presented. The only ones and the ones all are As presented. All those in favor? Uh, hold on. I have a. Are we ke? Are we keeping that sentence in, or are we taking it out? We're, we're keeping the change as it's presented. So we're taking so, that sentence out. That, no, we're just taking the edits out. The sentence is now going to read: "Complaints should not be presented or accepted under public input." For ke, you said. Yes, for ke. Yes. All I see is under public input. Period. Right. No. Oh. Well, you it should have the beginning of the sentence. Complaints should not be presented or accepted. It's crossed out. Hmm. No. Um, oh. Complaints should not be presented or accepted under public input. That's the whole sentence now. Okay. I'll make sure that that's appropriately shown here. Oh yeah, that's correct. Say, that's not what's shown on KE right now. So. Are you on? Are you on? Like looking online? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Attached through the agenda. Yeah, we've got the paper copy, so that's been not doing that. Yeah, so it's I was different. Okay. I hate to jump in and do this, but I do think we need to, to say that public concerns and complaints and public participation is different. Somehow, I, I think we need to state that very clearly. Because, as you said, Nancy, people come when they have complaints. They've got an issue. So, it's, somehow we need to delineate that. Well, it says with complaints or concerns regarding any aspect of this or So, you know what's actually confusing about that is that the whole thing is called public concerns and complaints when the whole point of this is that they're not public. I think I think you leave this policy as is before any change is done and that sentence just stays there uh, because it does still allow them if they want to come in and complain they it sh tells them the proper uh, chain of command that they're supposed to follow and then if we feel necessary or the board chair feels necessary they can add it to the agenda to the next meeting. I don't see that we need to make any changes to KE 
And then in regards to as presented, we can't really do that for BEDH if we're going to change section D to add 21 minutes, et cetera, to D, because that's not what was presented. Yeah, but Travis, I, I guess I would disagree because the point that in KE is actually that it's, it is, it's inappropriate for a complaint of this nature to be brought in public input um, like without, you know, you, you wouldn't, it's not the right, it's not the right, it's not public input. You know, it's a specific complaint about an issue. Well, it is. I, I mean, they're saying, they stand up and say, well, I, I really feel we should do masks. So somebody's, I mean, that's their public opinion. True. I guess I thought this was more about, um, like, my child's IEP is not correct. Like, that's what it feels like this is more geared towards. Oh, really? Or I don't, you know, my, I don't like my student's teacher or something like that. Like, because it says... But to me, it doesn't mean that this is public input. Because the public input is B, E, H, that's public participation at board meetings. This to me is a whole different... This is about, yeah, yes. But in so certain we get something, did we get something out of the school board association or the lawyers where that we need to have in place a policy that has to be deals with, that allows the public right. ways to... Public input, right, 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 which we do have, right. And then this one addresses how to, if you have concerns, not necessarily public input concerns, but concerns, and the chain of command right. for the concerns. Correct, and then it gives us the out that if they do come to our board meeting and do it under public input, then we can either uh, tell them to follow the chain of command or put it on the agenda for the next meeting if we feel necessary, according to the way it's currently written. So what would be an example of a public, of something that would fall under the concerns and complaints? Because, I mean, obviously people bring forward complaints mm -hmm. in public input, and that's fine. So what would be an example of something that would fall under this policy and not be considered public input? Um, one of the things that occurred for us three, two years ago, when we had a gentleman come in about specifically about his son and a complaint against the administration. Correct. Um, but that wouldn't be allowed under any of these. Right. right. It shouldn't, right. It, but it shouldn't be. Right. It shouldn't right. So be. what, but I wonder. Well, that, you could, that's a concern in the complaint that we could definitely have dealt with. A lower it, level. Look like, yeah, less public. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, so what's your, if you're asking. I me. mean, because there are, because it is true that a lot of people that come and give public input is about a complaint. It could be a policy, it could be whatever. And we that's what the public input is for. So I'm just wondering how people would know which, how we would know what it falls under, like the public input or the public complaint, because the vast majority of public input is complaining. It's, and you don't know why they start talking exactly. Yeah, and happens. it's not, you know, we're not gonna cut them off and say, actually, you need well, to go off the chain of command. <laughs> so I'm just trying to, like, I'm trying to, I mean, it feels like the things that fall under the complaint are actually issues that would typically not be allowed anyway because they're more individual. Right. So, but then they may be complaining. They may be complaining about policy. Right. Or like they may be complaining about the decision the board made or whatever. Right. And then I think the appropriate place is public input, right. even if it's a complaint because we're the ones that they need to speak to. Because I know like when I get an email about, you know, somebody saying there's something going on, can I get on the, the agenda? It's like, well, you have to follow these steps and go to the principal and you're not going to go to the superintendent and so forth. Because a lot of people don't know what the proper chain of command is if you want to use that. That's true. I've been a few instances where I've said talk to me personally. Yeah. 
And that's like, okay, you're telling them that's the way to do it. Well, right, because it's it's not as public as exactly. something that's private. And it's typically about their own kiddos at some level, but you just want to not have it be. Right. Yeah. In front so, of I mean, in that case, like it, none of them should really make it to a board agenda. Typically, no. But we're no. we're saying that that is an option. Yeah, and you know, and in all honesty, we haven't had many situations that have reached a level of frustration, I guess, on the part of the person struggling that they would get to this level. But it does happen, right? I mean, I think like the nut allergy. Yeah, I was just going to say that that is actually the one thing that yes. comes to mind, which yeah. did go through all the channels, yes. and yeah. I feel like that was sort of the example I could think of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So where does that leave us? Yeah, where does that put us? Yeah, do you want to keep this or do you want to change this one? KE. I still think that the edit that is made to KE is appropriate. I don't have anything to like make a suggestion, but just listening to everybody's like I don't know. I feel like we might not have it right if we have to talk so much about <laughs> interpretations. You, I don't know where. I don't know how to fix it, but I wonder. If they, I wish that there was there's some way to put in here. We have an, an individual complaint that affects you more. Well, that's what I think the title should be. I don't think it should be public complaints. I think it should be personal complaints, not public complaints. Well, it should be a paragraph that says individual yeah. concerns about your yeah. son or daughter are not complaints. You need to follow the chain of command. Or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I think she's right with the, the title of it. It does kind of make you start thinking about that. And like she said, just individual. If we have it more defined that it doesn't need the question. So it may not be the top. The policy, but it may be the students or other citizens. I think the rest of the writing is good, though. It's so just confusing to call it public concerns and then have the rest of it say, you can't have a public concern. So, um, <laughs> I just, I just, you know, looked up a couple of other, like, school districts really quickly, and they, this, it's a very boilerplate um, complaint. And they, this particular one just calls it complaints. They don't go anywhere else. They, the, the complaint procedure is the first three paragraphs. They don't have the sentence about public input. And then they have the right to appeal, which is at all levels, um, and restrictions on employees. So it's the same exact policy, but they don't have that sentence about public input, and it's called complaints. So I mean, we could just call it concerns and complaints, yeah, and not individual or public, but just yeah. Yeah. make it that, and then change that one. Keep your edit as it is, and yeah. I think the rest of it kind of works. Yeah, I think that's I think that's actually a function. It makes it a whole lot clearer. So you're going to change what now? You just, just remove the word public on the title, right? And do the change concerns. Sorry. Yep, and do the change on that paragraph, um, which so it would read that sentence complaint should not be presented or accepted under public input. Left at that. What was this on one? Travis, did you hear all that? Are you good with that change? I did. Uh, I. I still like it the way it currently reads. But we're trying to discourage, we're, we're saying that they should not bring it to the board at a board meeting for the first time. And the way it currently reads, leaves that door open. And the first paragraph really says, you, you do the lowest possible level you go to. Yeah, the chain. Yeah, it says, so the only exceptions are, are complex that concern school board actions or operations. Such complaints should be addressed to the board chair. So I think that spells out. I think that spells out most of it right there. But it should, you know, I think that's implied that it shouldn't be presented at a, at a public meeting. Yeah. And it, <clears throat> Public though, because I can see some people construing that as 
don't want to hear from the public. I don't know, no, because different policy anything that, public goes into public, public input. In this case, this it should not be public, so that's right. yeah, that's correct. But it just is following the the proper order. So, to have a policy just on public input. Yeah, yeah. the one right before it. I agree with Elba on that sentence. I think it spells it out. It doesn't leave any confusion. Mm -hmm. So we've got a public participation and then a different one that's just concerning complaints. Is that what you're saying? Travis, are you good at that? Yeah, I'm listening. I'm, I'm still looking, trying to figure it out, but you can move forward. Do we want to? not pass this one and just do the other three so while we cash some of the stuff up on this one can we uh just shelve this till the end move this to decision to the end of the meeting and see if we have how we feel about it then and if not then we can vote on the other ones <laughs> okay we'll come back to this at the end of the meeting <laughs> Facilities of finance. Okay, so we have Kevin, Michelle Hemiston, and Mike They're on remote. In case there were questions, I could that. Oh, I thought Mike was looking a little out. Oh, he's perfect. So if there are questions as we go through this. So we will start by just saying last week yep. there was a facilities and finance committee meeting. The primary uh, goal of that committee meeting was to address the um, space issues in more academic program than the school. And I want to preface this by saying that we would have these space issues if the school building were passed as well because the need is right in North Carolina. There are 30 students from last year. Their kindergarten is larger than it has been in a while. Uh, Mike is thinking that that could be a trend that continues in that, you know, in the town with the kindergarten students maybe planning for next year. So when we met with the facilities and finance committee, and um, so Nancy Travis, you were there, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I thought so. Uh, well, no, I was at the building. That's right. Thank right you. Uh, so we talked about three options. The first one was the modulars, I mean, modulars in North Berwick. And what we did was uh, we sat down and sketched out some of the financial financial impact to that, um, and that's number one. Only one ed tech for eight classrooms. Well, that's an additional ed tech to support. Oh, so, so they would speak. already there already. Yes, yes, yes. right. right. This, this is an actual this is a lot about right. that movement between the buildings and that kind of stuff. Right. Do you have this document on email that you can send me so I can look at it as well, please? Just send yes. No, I got it. I'll just send it to you right now. Oh, is it somewhere else? Hold on. I'm, I'm just going to resend it to you. Track. You should get it. So Kevin has done a lot of like work on this as far as teasing out the um, costs, the one-time costs as well as those recurring costs that we would have. So a modular rental is six thousand dollars per month. And that's for two double classrooms. And that, that's a five-year commitment, and that gives us the best rate. So over the course of the, the year, it will be $72,000. Crazy amount of money. Yeah. 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 So then the, the other crazy amount of money is the sprinkling. Um, Kevin, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Again, you do that very well about the new regulations with sprinkling. Yeah, um, basically the state biomodule came up with a new 
code mandate as far as modular classrooms, anything over a thousand square feet, um, it's now going to be sprinkled. Um, and that went into effect in 2019. So basically to kind of give us what we need for classroom space and talk with Mike Audver and Sue, obviously, um, kind of what I figured out is that we'd need two 68 by 28 modulars, which be, we'd be able to fit two classrooms in, which puts us well over the, the thousand square foot for sprinkling. So that number there, I don't know what, who can see what for documents, I can't tell, um, but sprinkling, them buildings and that's just running a water line basically to where we put the module is um and that number is based off what we did at the Hussey school this past summer for the srf project and the sprinkle system down there so basically it's it's one hundred twenty five thousand dollars just to run a water line to where we're going to put these modules which would be somewhere on the back side of the parking lot either somewhere in the ryan home or close to where the current cottages are. So that's that's a huge fee. And that went into effect in 2019. And I found that out when I was calling to get pricing on modulus. So that's where that number comes from. Um, and real quickly, to heat them, um, they come with what they call air exchanges, each of them. But we have to heat them. So that's where the $16,000 comes from. That was through P. Gagnon in talking with them, just giving them the area of what we have for square footage for each modular. So that would be the cost for that. Um, you'll see in this $75,000 CMP to run power. Um, and again, that's just a high end number. It could be lower than that. It could be that amount. It depends on what CMP says when they come down to kind of give me an idea, okay, this is where you're going to put the modulars. This is what we can do for you for power. We might have to install a new transformer. So that's where that number comes from. Um, other than that, I mean, it's kind of a, it's a big expense. So those are all numbers that we just kind of rounded up in the last two weeks. And that's where we stand. What's up with timing on, on so, this? Sorry, Denise, what? Um, just what's the timing, what's our timing on meeting to find a place for these kids and how, what's the timing on like if we went with option one, like how long would that take? The timing for the students would be next year. Okay. We need to do something for the September. Okay. And okay. how soon do you have to order the individual? Very module. soon. Correct, Kevin. Very soon I'm ordering the modulars. I'm sorry, say that again. If we were to go with this route, we would need to get the modulars right. We would need to reserve them right away and put a deposit on. Correct. And and one thing I did forget is the site work expense. Um, again, it's talking with Mike A over North Berwick and kind of figuring out you can. We want to put them in the parking lot. Well, we're going to use a parking lot space. We're going to have no parking. Big student drop off staff parking visitor parking a nightmare it, do we talk to the ryan home and can we lease property from them either way we've got site work to do so you're probably looking at an additional 50 to seventy thousand dollar cost in site work um, because you just can't set them you like on a lawn area you have to put them on a nice flat graveled area or paved area and and i will tell you straight up the parking lot is not an option at nb um, because it's going to take up too much space. It's going to be too congested with what we have there now. So the only option we would have would be talk with the Ryan home to see if they will be willing to lease us land over there to put them on. Okay. And like CMP isn't even able to come out until April of this year, right? Right. They're, they're not going to come down until we have a fixed plan in place on what we want to do. Because when they come out, they're going to want to know, okay, this is exactly what we want to do. They're, they're not going to try to sit there and give us different locations. They're going to want to know exactly where we want to put them so they know exactly what they need to do so they can give us an exact cost of what it's going to take. And is it just the fifth grade we're going to move out there? No matter what we do, we'll just look at the fifth grade. Right, right. Also, Mike, do you want to talk speak to that? Yep, absolutely. So 
Uh, right now, we actually have three fourth grades and one fifth grade in the cottages. And so if we were to get four additional cottages, we would be moving fifth. So all of fifth grade and all of fourth grade would be in cottages. Um, and also, most likely, music and slash band and chorus. Uh, it, it there's a lot to go here. There there's a huge um, huge space situation that's coming, <clears throat> and it's not going to stop next year. It's a wave, and it's only even next. So after next year, we're still going to be in this exact same conversation where we will need, no, regardless of any of these three choices, we will need additional space the year after and potentially the year after that. And just going back up to the sprinkling to get the water line in, that is not for plumbing. So, so bathrooms did not be there. So they're gonna have to go. They're still in and out of the building. building. Right. Or along. Right. I mean, that that money is just to make the buildings code approved per state bylaws and guidelines. That's crazy. Uh, just to clarify, we're talking, I think the paperwork shows four, uh, two, adding two double modulars. And I think Mike just said four. I believe we were talking about four at the meeting as well. Um, and what you guys all have are options that we're trying to discuss, different avenues that we can go down. So we just, when Kevin talked about the doubles, that's still four classrooms. Instead of four individuals, right. there's not enough space on the property. Right. Right? Because of the way we have to do the, hand, the ramps and everything. Yeah, so it's two, two modulars with four classrooms in it. Correct, correct. Okay. I, this is very well laid out and very helpful. I feel like based on what Mike just said that what we need to be looking at is is a three-year plan yes. not necessarily a one-year plan and that may look different so maybe a three-year plan includes something at the Knowlton school next year and then next, whatever happens after that but I feel like in order to make the best decision that's what we need to be looking at because it will impact the budget and it will impact moving kids yes. So we just wanted to go through the second one with you as well because there has been some consistent um, conversation in North Berwick about taking back Marigold Academy or MHA. So we wanted to just price this out for you as well. Uh, the space at MHA, uh, 27. 27 students are currently there. And so it would not be taking the whole building it would be taking the classrooms downstairs. So you would be having um, the students up, some students upstairs and then fifth grade, the North Berwick fifth grade downstairs. So you're having fifth graders with high schoolers in that space. And there would be some um, things that absolutely need to occur to that building uh, to make it accessible for fifth graders. Primarily, some of the biggest pieces are the kitchen and the work that needs to be done in the kitchen area to even make it a satellite kitchen. There's a dishwasher that would need to be purchased, an oven, some warming trays, um, and then we have to add some clerical support. Currently, there's no clerical support in that building, and some part-time staff for school nutrition for breakfast and lunch coverage. Um, so that, again, will come out to $150,000. How do we handle the kitchen staff with those that are there now? Um, there is no kitchen staff. They actually have just um, delivered meals to from the high school to the MHA students. And that's feasible because there's only 27 kids there, right? Much more. Um, it's easily done. But I think with an extra 40 students, so that'd be like, that would be a little more difficult. Um, and it would really just re it would require just the kitchen be brought back up to certification standards and then it would still be a satellite site and that the Northburg primary or the you know Northburg elementary would still would cook for those but then they'd have to bring it over and do all the prep and all that kind of stuff of the old days <laughs> and then the last option that we discussed was um, moving the fifth grade from Northburg 
to the Milton School for next year. And some of those fees are there. Uh, we have potential part-time staff for school nutrition. We would have some moving costs and relocation costs, but those would be handled in-house with our staff. And there would be some staff that may need to travel um, to get to the building to be able to support the, the student increase over there, 48 students. So the, at, at the end of the Facilities and Finance Committee, the recommendation to, for them was to go with uh, moving the students to Milton School for next year, knowing that we need to do some work ahead, that it doesn't solve the problem long term, I guess is the point. Do, do either two or three have any significant impact on transportation of the students, like busing issues or just? Uh, three would have um, some busing. I think I wrote it down on the, um, the schedule and the transportation from North Berwick to Milton. So they, there are some considerations to deal with as far as that, tra that transport. Between North Berwick and the herd of MHA, not yeah. so much. They, they have legal help available there. I mean, there's more coming. Milton House, yeah. yes. Yeah. And Michelle, do you want to talk about your classroom space? Um, yeah, so we would combine some people that are in, that are currently in single spaces, um, doubling up some service providers. Um, we can make three spaces. Um, we have one science lab that could be converted back to a classroom that would take some of Kevin's uh, expertise to make that happen, but we did do that one with one classroom already. Um, so physically, we can, we can fit them. It certainly will affect things like lunches, um, and then we'll need to kind of think about what that will do for things like our special ed numbers and how will that impact um, our specialists? Will they be able to teach all the sections and things like that? Would it, I mean, I don't know if this matters, but like if we did that, well, never mind. That's, we'll ask it another time. So one thing I, I just would like to say is that we, there is not one good option. We, we don't have, there's a cost to every single option that, that's on this list. And so, um, you know, we can talk about that for a long time, but we really do have to establish a position where we are going to have a plan for at least a three-year plan, uh, like, like a board member just said, because this is, this is going to be a significant challenge. And so, you know, a th the three, the fifth grade moving over to Knowlton School, would alleviate three classroom spaces at North Berwick Elementary School. And really, the mid, like, ha absolutely have to happen. We need three spaces, so that would accommodate that. But that fourth space that would the, the portables would uh, accommodate for, that that's not just a want. That is almost a need. Um, this year, we are, we are about as bare bones. We have essentially classes being taught in hallways there we are at a um an absolute situation at north Burrock elementary school and i would just want to be super clear that moving three classrooms is going to keep us in that exact situation next year and then again the following year we're either going to have classrooms that are um in the you know 22 23 in second grade first grade or we're going to need another solution so like I said at the beginning, there is not one single solution that is going to be the, the one that puts a smiley on it and we're done. This is a hard decision because there is not a good solution. And we have to make this decision. Uh, you don't need to make it tonight. Well, however, <laughs> good. however, it is the recommendation from the Facilities and Finance Committee. And it, and if we wait a long time, we're not going to be able to get modulars. That piece of it needs to be done within the next. That's, can I, can I interrupt that? You just hit it right on the head. That's the big part is reserving them because 
we have to start if we, let's just say we want to do the modulars it's going to be a while we're lining up site work i mean it's been a couple of years trying to finish our s our rf projects only because materials and labor and help and contractors um so it's and we're what six months away from possibly putting them in if we go that route so it's like we got to make a decision asap if you want to do the modulus because you still have to figure out you the best place like i said is probably going to be on the ryan home you'll have to negotiate with them to find out if we can use their property or if they're willing to give us property i don't know that that's not my call but i mean all that's got to be determined so it, the big thing is if we're going to do modules next year we have to go soon we have to make a decision soon because <laughs> i've got a lot to line up in a short amount of time because well, i'm wondering if you could do a combination if you could if you could put the fifth grade over to Noctil and maybe just get one modular this year to put at North Berwick. I mean, it seems like the majority of the cost isn't the actual, I mean, a big part of it is the actual modular, but like you're still going to have to run sprinkler lines. You're still going to have to do site work. And they may need another module next year. I don't know. I, I think the, uh, I think the third option is the best one for us just because outside of the, the, lower amount of cost. If we're looking at the three year thing, it solves it for right now. And then hopefully we could move forward with the new school plans again and then see where things are going with that. Because I hate the idea of spending all this money to do this with the modules. And then if we could finally get to that whole new school, we just spent all that money for, I mean, to get people out of hallways. But if we have somewhere else to put them temporarily, well, we can hopefully give them a better school. I don't know, that's what I feel because I really want them to get a new school. I want. I, I agree with you. Absolutely. Yeah, I have a hard time with I have a hard time with the amount of money that we would there would be absolutely zero return. Like we will never get back any return for running water lines for sprinklers yeah. or you know. But I mean, to Mike's point, we can do that. We can do number three. You're going to have to do something else again the year after. Yeah, I like. Can we can we maybe make a decision of one versus two and three? Like like not decide between two and three quite yet, because um, it sounds like it's the modulars and that work that really needs to be decided on. But um, and I don't like. I feel like the first one is the only one that really sort of that costs. We have an idea of what that will cost for the next three to five years, we've got a lease, you've got the one time versus, and then for the other two, I would, I just wanna know, not so much cost wise, but like, if we move kids to the Knowlton School or, or to the downstairs in Mary Heard, like with our numbers that we're projecting, are they moving again in two years or will that, could, could we house them in either option two or three with what we're projecting for the next three years? So it's less of a cost and more of a, are we going to move things again? And we won't know necessarily until we start to see the trends for that kindergarten. If kindergarten with me continues to come in at 16, yeah, then it's definitely, yeah, and you're right, we won't necessarily know. So, so did you Could we have a plan A and a plan B? <laughs> well, that was my question. So you're proposing right now just looking at one and do we take one off the table and then address two and three, take some, a little bit of time to address two and three. Yeah, I guess I would ask, is anybody on the board in favor of option one is really what we need to sort of, if, if anybody is leaning that direction, then we need to really talk about that. And if not, then we can refocus. I don't know. I mean, it just seems to me like, if you don't do it this year, if you, I'm going to end up going there next year or the year after. Going where? To modular someplace. I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like the voters just said, don't spend the money. And, you know, so if that's, you know, I think that the plan that we put forward was a large spend, but more responsible, more long term. Um, that's a lot of money to spend on something that's temporary. I agree. I think I think that 
Well, uh, it's the, I said in the finance facilities meeting that option three is our best option because it, it, it doesn't going to cost us a whole lot of money. As much as it is kind of a difficult one when it comes to the North Burke residents having to come to the Knowlton School, the Knowlton School is already set up for fifth grade. Um, it, it is with their peers who they will eventually end up with at the next year in their sixth grade. Uh, it, um, and I hate the idea, like Denise said, of, you know, throwing money at a at a modular that is just going to disappear when we don't need it anymore. We're just kind of throwing money out the window when we have an option that can be done, although it might be an inconvenience for some, it can be done at a minimal cost. I think I think the, the number one discussion should happen and you should either rule it in or rule it out because we need to move on the module to that route. So the other two we can even discuss at the next meeting. Right. But I think you address number one first. Yeah. Okay. And what are people's feelings? As far as my one. So for number one, um, like I could sort of eyeball this and say, you know, the the first year costs are the one twenty five plus sixteen plus seventy five, and then the ongoing is lease from the Ryan home, cost of the modulars. You know, so first year we're looking at four hundred thousand, maybe. And then after that, we're looking at like 130. 130. Yeah. And we're and we're tied into that for a five-year lease. What was yeah. that? Is? Yeah, yes. five-year lease. At this point, though, take that line being longer than the school. Yeah. Well, that is one of the issues. <laughs> so we got to think about that. All right. I missed what she said. Can somebody repeat it? That uh, if you're looking at the five year lease that we're locked into at this point, where we keep, we're not going to proceed with construction, it's going to be several years before we can vote again or whenever we can vote again, it's still going to be, what, two or three years beyond that. So, you know, we definitely, five years is probably what we're looking at. Yeah. Okay, so do you want to just do a stop call? Oh, who wants to consider one and who, who want, doesn't want to do number one? Or do we have a question? <laughs> <laughs> I see three thumbs down. Four. <laughs> so, I'll be number four on thumbs down. Okay. <laughs> well, I think the reality of it is that currently, since we're going into basically December here, you're going to be looking at a one-year solution right now. Right. So that would be that would make sense that you'd be looking at these two options, two and three. Yeah. Um, but understanding that it isn't out of the question that you may end up having to do something physically on the property right. in the future. So like it's never going to necessarily be off the table. Um, but it could be off the table for a bit yeah. while we. Me. And we can always do no, go for number three, and then if it looks like things aren't going well for the new school, then fall back on two. When do we get to registrations in around the, April vacation, yeah. like right after or okay. before April vacation? Mike, is that correct? Is that kind of your timeline for registration? Yep, that is correct. We uh, we will send stuff out in March, and then we'll start seeing things in. Uh, you know, we should be able to know fairly early what the numbers are, March, April area. That would make sense to me. I mean, I will say that the Milton School has a solid history of adapting <laughs> and bringing new grades in and doing it well, and it doesn't seem to matter what staff is in charge. I think it's, you know, we've kind of gone down this road before with the Milton School and it's far as I know, it's always gone very smoothly. They've done a really good job 
turning labs into classrooms, dividing them, coming up with creative spaces. It's a good building and it's, yeah. So my question would be for Michelle is what is, if we were to move these three classes from Northbrook to the Knowlton School, what are you looking at for space in the future? Do you have any more or does this ex maxim the no maximize the Knowlton School? Um, I think we would be pretty full. I don't think we'd be anywhere near what North Berwick is looking at. Um, we do have had some luxury of space over the years. Um, you know, I guess what my thoughts around this really are that this is a, a multi-year plan. Like we don't want it to just kind of think about this in terms of, you know, people are moving over temporarily, you know, in order to build a unified school, it would be nice if we were thinking of, you know, long-term. That was good timing, Kevin. Only you, Kevin. Sorry. Sorry. So there is a conversation about waiting for more board members to be here. Um, there was also a conversation that the facilities and finance committee is making a recommendation to you to go with number three for next year so we can start that process of talking with staff and the community to yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I still would really like to see, I, I mean, I'm in favor of number three. I'd still really like to see what that looks like in a five-year plan. So those fifth graders go here, they're in sixth grade at the Knowlton School. What does that do to the middle school? What does that do? What's the trickle up? Sure. And and I feel I mean I have a feeling you guys probably have already figured that out. Um, but I think that would be helpful with sort of the approach, not just the money part of it, but like having that unification and um, just so we're not kind of revisiting it again next year. Because if we move them over, we know exactly how, like even if it doesn't grow we know that there's however many kids those are and they're here's how it's going to go down so that so i think that would be helpful we can do that for the next board meeting yeah that'd be great sure so i guess that's yes look at two and three right so that's pretty much so we have it we're all set with the, with no modulars but thank you for the amount of work that went into figuring that out they need to plow that away and I don't think it's going away. I think we're going to always going to need to step back and look at that over time. Okay, so that's the facilities. That's the major, that's the major thing. Okay. I still remember when the Hussey School modulars were being developed and the, or delivered and the driver tried to come down my road. Uh -huh. oh. Yes. Oh, goodness. It didn't work out too well. No. Okay, educational program. Great. So I just want to say to Michelle and Mike, thank you. And Kevin, you don't need to hang out. Thank you for your input and participation at Facilities and Finance. It's been a long day, I know, so I didn't want to hold you up. So thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Have a great night. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay, so a couple of things. We had our um, vaccination clinic at North um, at North at Noble Middle School yesterday. And we had um, a little over 50 students participate in that. We have our next one tomorrow in Lebanon at the Hamp Lebanon Elementary School. And, um, and then, so December 8th is our next one at Noble Middle School and December 10th is the, the final one in Lebanon at the Lebanon Elementary School. So we have students that are registering for that clinic that's happening. We wanted to just publicly thank our staff. We had uh, about two staff from each elementary school at the clinic yesterday. York Hospital had said that it is really helpful. We need our staff when the students come in scared and nervous, even if they're with their parents. So it was really great to, to be able to have the representation that we had from our building. So we do appreciate that. And we will have Lebanon staff from the Lebanon one um, tomorrow. And the clinic went very smoothly, really well organized. Tables were, you know, tables were set up. Everybody moved through it very efficiently and effectively. I was actually on a meeting this morning for um, administrative certification, and 
one of the um, superintendents was talking about how they were running it during the school day mm -hmm. and how some of the students were really scared about their meals. So we felt very lucky and happy that we had scheduled it after hours when parents could accompany their students. So that was good. Um, we have our attendance for the last couple of weeks. We've had, um, so the range, we always go through the range. So the range was a low of 85% attendance, and then the high was 97%. That's for students. For students. What was the low? The low was 85. Okay. And for staff, the low was 85% in attendance, and the high was 94%. And I just want to spend a little time talking about our cases. We have had good feedback using the dashboard. Um, we are, it is being utilized. It is getting updated every single day when we have a case. Um, our head nurse, Amy Crichton, will go in and talk with Jen in the office and we will update that. So I just want to give you um, an update. As of right now, we have, we have addressed 120 positive cases just since fall. September. Last year, the full year, we dealt with 140 cases. <laughs> so we, um, and wow. we did not get a break. Like there was no um, two weeks before, you know, two weeks in and then, I mean, it happened like right away. Yep. Um, so what we are finding is that Monday mornings seem to be a really busy time for our schools our nurses and our administrators because some of those tests that come that are done like on Thursday or Friday those results are trickling in Saturday Sunday Monday so we're finding like on Mondays we've had four cases that we've had to trace at the high school it takes an incredible amount of time um, so so this part of the conversation is really what we wanted to talk about with you is talking about after Thanksgiving. And so we anticipate, based on the trend of Mondays, mm -hmm. that the Monday after Thanksgiving, we're probably going to get a lot of information. And, we, and this is just a guess, you know, like based on the information that we have, this is our guess. So if there are a lot of um, things that we need to address, a lot of cases that we need to go through and trace for close contacts, there may be a time that a building may need to go remote for a day while allowing our staff to be able to really um, make sure that they are contacting everybody that they need to contact if we have a high number of cases. So are the Mondays busy? Um, they're busy with staff because they're getting test results from families or Right, or they're getting notified from the CDC. Yeah. And it's, it almost, it seems like it's just on Monday, we're getting a bunch on Mondays. Yeah. Um, on Monday, is it at all schools, or is it primarily younger kids, or is it? It's a real blend. Yeah, it's not just, yeah. So if we thought about doing remote for those days after Thanksgiving, that's like we did last year? Well, we, that's, we, that's, we could do that. I actually don't remember what we did last year, but. Something like that. What we did last year was going into Thanksgiving, we had the Monday, Tuesday remote. Okay. After. So I know a lot of schools are doing the remote afterwards, but that's in situations where they're required testing. You know, so I suppose we're not allowed to encourage people to get tested after Thanksgiving. One of the superintendents just sent an email out to all of your county superintendents asking you know if we are planning on going remote prior to or after thanksgiving break and right now none of this, the uh, north county schools are planning on a remote before or after break um some of the schools are seeing a little uptick in their cases we're kind of seeing a real steady you know steady amount of cases just kind of coming in even though york county's going up a little bit we're just we're steady um so we just wanted you know, we have talked about do we take that Monday and Tuesday and really allowing going remote, really allowing administrators and our uh, nurses in our building to make sure we're contact tracing. And then we've talked about, okay, what if, you know, what if we just come in on Monday and look at Monday and see the volume 
and then make that decision about Tuesday. So we're in this because again, not only you oh. get test results, but people have been away for Thanksgiving. That's what I'm thinking. They're going to show up at school on Monday and expose a whole bunch of other people. Right. I feel like by Monday, they would have started to have symptoms, maybe, right. or somebody else in the family might have. So, I, yeah, I mean, I'm not a fan of doing remote, but I would say if you're going to do Monday, do Monday, Tuesday, or, like, give it enough time, not just for the staffing, but, like, I don't, th I don't think doing it before Thanksgiving would address. I don't think that would be. Pick up right over the weekend. And that's what we talked about too, that that's not going to help us with our contact tracing. Right. It's another one of these things. Yes, I can't yeah. know. I think we would like, we would we would err on this we would like to err on the side of caution like you said we would probably see some symptoms coming in sunday monday yeah. we would like to be able to contact trace um it's, it's taking some in some cases it's taking hours to make yeah. those yeah. calls yeah. and you know like there were 40 close contacts today that needed to be contacted at one school and that just takes a lot of time and then we want to you know, we're doing it right. We want to make sure that we are making contact with families and making sure everybody knows the, the process and the guidelines for close contacts. So. Are all grades set up to go remote? All grades are set up to be able to go remote. The kindergarten, I would say, has the least experience with it. Um, but that, if we notify tomorrow, Say they, they have, have time to, to right they would have to take everything home on tuesday but they all of the technology um educational technicians in the buildings have gone over students like with the google classroom and classroom and it would give teachers an opportunity to send home if they wanted to send home some books or um, other activities as well so I think it's dark. If you go remote, we're going to have issues with having that count as a normal class day because of the lunch issues, correct? Yep. Oh, my God. Yeah. So we we're going to have to figure out how to do it. We'll deal with that. And we'll get the food out if we need to so that we can make it work. Right. Those are the demands. It's right. The hardest ones are the snow days that are unplanned. Like, if we give Abby what she needs to know, we can get this taken care of. But we it is hard. We have to decide by Tuesday. We would. Yeah, we need to know. So that and we can it kind of like, we have to see what comes in on Monday, I would think. If it absolutely snowed on this Monday, I would say, remote. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I don't see them being able to do contact trace and do all that stuff. So are you, are you asking us to give you an answer on going remote just for the Monday? No, I think I have, it's really complex. Yeah. You know, it's really complex because, because I think that's the decision you have. Well, I guess my question is, what, what do you need? What do you need a decision? What do you need us to make a decision on this? I think this is more of an awareness thing. We want okay. to know that this is a, a good potential that, it, that we will be looking at this and going, we should go remote Monday, Tuesday, after November. I mean, I am just concerned about I mean, the whole I, lunch thing. Yeah, that's going to be. Right. That's, that's I would. I mean, obviously, we would. I would just say let's make sure that we make a decision. I think we have a, a, we've made a mistake a couple of times of not making, not giving people enough time. Yeah. So I would just say if we do make a decision, let's do it right away. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's almost like we don't want to wait till next month. I know. Almost not. I wouldn't wait. Yeah. I mean, I, I can tell you that you know Amy is. There are several cases pending right now, so my sense is that it's just going to be a steady, steady stream until Monday. So I um, maybe at our next board meeting we should also have on the agenda to talk about Christmas and yes. how we want to handle that. Yeah. If we go remote Monday and Tuesday after Thanksgiving, are we just pushing the problem to Wednesday, Thursday? Because are we going to know? 
uh, whether or not these people are, are possible exposures or stuff like that? Because they're not going to be in school on Monday and Tuesday, so they're no, not. They would, they would have to let you, like, just like if somebody who tested positive on a weekend, they would still let them. They would still let the nurse's office know. Right? Yeah, but I guess what I'm trying to say is, are we just pushing the problem that we would have on a Monday? Are we pushing it now to Wednesday? Because that's the first day we would be back in school. But they would have had symptoms by that time. Yeah, that right. they would have been or tested, tested or, or yeah. yeah. If the symptoms started on Monday. And it, it makes it two more days where it's not contact with other kids. Right. So if somebody, you know, yeah, I think it, I think it, it like, it doesn't change whether or not people become infected, but it does, I think, significantly improve Amy's options for contact tracing. Reaching out to right now, actually. I think we would have our support okay. if we do it Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday. And it does make more sense to go Monday, Tuesday versus just. I think so. Yeah, they agree. I think once you, once everyone's set up for it, it's, yeah. I mean, that can food service over a week. Right. I think there's some time frames. Like, it can't be longer than a, it's a five day. <laughs> so that's. We're going to figure it out. We'll figure it out. Well, I just want to pull my teeth out. It's just, it's, it's so complicated. It's complicated, it but is. it's less complicated than a snow day. Yeah, as far as. Yeah, really. Yeah. 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 Well. In terms of getting the meals out. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other meetings? Just, you know, Cinderella's um, going on yeah. right now. Oh, and it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the dress rehearsal's right now. Saturday, Friday, Saturday, our 7 p.m. starts. Yeah. And then matinee on Sunday. Um, our winter athletics officially begin on the 22nd. Um, Sue and I have been able to get to our school to visit our schools, and our so students good. are really excited to be in school. And kindergartners are very busy with their, uh, you know, all their work as far as their journaling and working on sounds and putting letters and cool. words together. It's very, very good. Good to see. Um, that's been fun. Our student rep to the school board um, is Hyla Pitchett, and she is actually in Cinderella, so she is not here tonight. So she will be joining us at our next meeting. And as I think I mentioned last year, last time we had a meeting, she's a junior. Um, so hopefully she'll be able to continue for two, two um, seconds of this. And those are, those are the updates. Employment, sure. So last um, last meeting we accepted the resignation of the guidance counselor at North Broick, and this time we are nominating um, Amy Fuller to that position. Amy Fuller has spent the last couple of years at North Broick as an ed tech, but prior to that she has done some social work um, through the brother and with big sister and caring away home care. So she's done some coordination, some social work. Work. And so that is the nomination for the guidance council position. So is she qualified? She is. She's come. She's qualified as a social worker. Okay. So we can get a conditional cert a okay. certificate waiver. Yep. And she's finishing coursework for schools and counseling. And it's been nice. It's nice that she's already been in the building as an educational technician. She knows the the routine. So that's good. Yes, we do need to go on that. So we do need that motion. We make a motion. We accept uh, Amy Fuller as the guidance counselor. I I say it right. Okay. I'll put it right in there. Thank you. All those in favor? Travis? Yes. <laughs> Six all right. Okay, and then we have a retirement. Sue Pinnell from Milton School. 
and her retirement. Uh, she's looking to retire in December, right as we head into break. And I'm, I'm trying to think of how long she's been here. Her letter didn't have how long she was. Uh, she's been that's here. A good question. Started in North Berwick. She moved over when it was five, six, and stayed now that it's Milton. So she's currently at Milton School. Let's say. Yes, that's what I'm saying too. So you need to make a motion. Okay, so I'm going to make that one. I make a motion to extend the second. Retirement, sorry. Retirement, retirement. Have a second for that? I'll second. I'm going to skip going to the hitch up. You go for it, you got it first. That's funny. All those in favor? Yes. 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 All we had to do was look. And our last one is a resignation. Heather Tyler, who's the North um, Noble High School guidance counselor. She's relocating. Her last day will be January 21st. So we do need that. Somebody make that motion. Go for it. <laughs> I moved to the second. Somebody to second it? Second. I was going to second. All those in favor? Thomas? Yes. Six <laughs> out. Yes. Yes. Okay. Is that it? Yes. Um, I did. You're back from Abby. She said, we can do this. We would have to just have pick up each day, which is what we did in the past. So we wouldn't send the ball. Oh, that's right. That works right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you need volunteers like that? How, how do you deliver? Do you have volunteers here? Sure, if you want to. So basically, they, they set up stations that they, they'll do stuff out of Noble High School for the Burwick and North Burke folks. Mm -hmm. Well, they'll do North Burke North High School, sometimes the middle school for the Burke crew, and then out in Lebanon for the Lebanon crew. And they'll, they're happy to have people come and help. <laughs> I, I will check in my neighborhood. Okay. Perfect. Okay, you ready for other? Okay, other. Which one? We <laughs> have a high school tomorrow. Oh, you want to talk about that? Yeah. Okay. So we have a um, demonstration tomorrow at the, it has been student generated regarding um, basically raising awareness regarding sexual assault and other concerns around sexual harassment. Um, students at I think there were three young ladies that sort of organized this and um, have worked with administration. Going to go off tomorrow morning at 9:30. Um, they have a moment of silence or reflection. They've got some talking points to have with anybody that's going to be listening, and Mr. Um, Dufort will also be speaking. And then it's a 15-minute window. And the, the students have been very um, forthright with their peers, asking them to be respectful, to um, not come out unless they're actually serious about this, that this isn't a, a way to get out of class. It's really a serious conversation that they want to start. And then ask them to return to class respectfully. So it should be um, interesting. interesting. Yeah, um, we definitely will have some media present. So is it going to be outside? Yeah, they're going to do it right up front. Um, we've, we're probably, I've been in touch with the, the Northport PD to try to, but we have heard that there are going to be some um, outside like parents coming through and we're going to ask that they not, that this is a student demonstration and that they not really, and bring a lot of cars in and because if we're going to have students outside we want safety, safety first. So the, the, the PD is going to try to monitor the roads like by 9.15. Things um, safe, traffic free, basically is our goal. So um, we will up, we'll keep you updated mm -hmm. on that. There's been uh, I don't know if you have seen or heard from the world. There's another um, 
sort of student um, concern that was brought forward, which is what triggered this a little bit. And we can we can't really talk about it publicly, so we'll we'll fill you in as best we can as the things progress. But there's um, everything's the statement that went out. I think we shared a statement with you all. Um, that is absolutely accurate. Everything that has ever been brought forward has been properly followed. I think that's kind of the whole thing. So I'm, I'm actually looking forward to tomorrow. I think it's really great that the kids are taking this on and I think I have a good turnout. Okay. Yeah. And that, and that um, are working really well with administration. So that's been a good thing. Any other others? Oh, I just have a question about the code of conduct. Yeah, so code of conduct committee, thank you. Um, things are just kind of kind of busy. Um, yes, so we're you. gonna we're gonna send out. So Nancy, do you still want to be on the committee? Yes. Okay. Um, would anybody else like to join the code of conduct committee? Um, so what we're gonna do is just kind of review the current code of conduct, which is you know just looking at. Um, behavioral issues and how we address them throughout the district. So there's consistency and that we follow through on, on the work that we do. Any, anybody else want to join in? I'd love to, but I don't think I can. Okay. If you need help, I'll join in. Okay. All right. And we can do some of this remotely. And you might want to let know. For some reason, I feel like that's her. Right. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, Lynn might be interested. So yeah. we'll send out, a, I would say, honestly, it's going to be, um, we'll set things in motion for early December to have one meeting, and then we'll be pushing it past the holidays I after that. Since the special sense administrators has changed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, we'll definitely do that. So we'll be, I'll be sending something out on that. Hopefully I'll, everything will be good by mid-morning tomorrow, and I'll <laughs> get information out in the, in the afternoon. Um, the other thing I just wanted to share which we're going to be doing a grand reopening of the Second Chance Closet, which is at Mary Bird Academy. Um, Rebecca Manning has done a fabulous job. We did a lot of upgrades in the building itself. And so the downstairs, and I'll, I'll add some pictures to our, our um, notes, and then I'm going to ask um, Audra to send it out in the newsletter. They are open for business. They are always looking for volunteers to help, but it looks like a professional um, clothing store now. Yeah. Is there a range to what kind of donations they look for? Um, in terms of, uh, like, is it just clothing or it's, uh, clothing, all sizes, like everything in general? So what happens is on Monday evenings when the food pantry is open, that's their busiest night, and they open up for the public to come in and. The folks from the food pantry really utilize it well, and we use it a lot for student support, like throughout the district. If we have families that are in need, um, the, the Ryan Home uses it for the, the, the kiddos that are there. There's also the, the folks at um, the recovery center down downtown in North Burke. They also utilize it. We have Maplestone folk, the kiddos out at Maplestone, which is a it's, it's a uh, school in Acton for students in other districts because we have Mary Bird, we don't actually utilize them. But they send kiddos over quite a bit to, you know, to get clothing. So and it's Monday night that they're open? Monday nights are when they're open to the public, yeah. And then we do by appointment um, for anybody during school, we, we kind of make it work. Um, so I meant to bring them, but um, Rebecca had new cards made up, so they're just kind of cute and cool. And, and it's really, a, 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 a very cool. So all ages, all, all ages, sizes, okay. like babies, right up through, um, and adult, and particularly men's clothing, is oh. scooped right up really? because there isn't. <gasps> oh, there's so a lot much. of women who clean out their closets, but not as many men. To be perfectly honest. Okay. So okay. yeah, they, they, they have the job, and this, and at this time of year, obviously, winter coats are being looked for. Anything that. that okay. you want. Got okay. so many things. Yeah, it's not away, so I'm and getting then, all this stuff away. Great. Okay. So whatever doesn't get put processed through the store, um, we take to Savers, and Savers gives us donation. Like they'll give us um, cash mm -hmm. for the things that are donated. So 
Okay. It's ongoing, but I'll try to write that up into a, an article for the newsletter because it's pretty cool. There's a lot going on. And the other part of the, what happened downstairs at Mary Bird is they renovated the food pantry, but the, not the food pantry side, but the backpack program side. So that looks, it just looks If great. we went to the option two, mm -hmm. would the, all of that have to move? Um, it would. It would impact things for sure. Yeah, because the 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 other thing that you need to I guess that I want people to understand about the Mary Heard piece is, although it's twenty seven students in a very you know decent sized building, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like it's a vast area because the students that are involved are they need a lot more space than a, than a typical teenager, um, and when we the, 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 the area that we're thinking about, if we were to take that, the, the North Fork Food Pantry has two rooms down on that end. And they've renovated those rooms with a walk-in freezer and a walk-in cooler. If we needed to, we could we could ask them to, to locate someplace else. I mean, that's doable. So that leaves three other rooms downstairs. Um, and they're all being used as classroom space for Mary Bird. So we would have to, we would be squeezing up onto the upper level. Um, and I I think it would impact the programming significantly. But, well, I know it would impact it significantly. So we just have to think about those things. And we can get you, I, one of the things that's always hard is the, the we took Mary Heard, we took Mary Heard from North Berwick to create the program that we did. Um, and then you know put everybody into K five at, at Northbrook Elementary School, and that is a sticking point for some folks in Northbrook. Mm -hmm. But we have a, really saved a lot of money by not having our students placed out in programs like Sweets or or Maple Syrup or all these other places. And it, I think the most important thing is we've kept our kids in our community, and they're actively like engaged in our community and they're they have jobs and they're graduating and they're doing things that they wouldn't necessarily be doing if they were out in outplacement and that's just a reality so that's my speech then we'll have more of that next time when we talk about <laughs> yeah. two and three ammo yeah, yeah. Well, I am. sorry that's a pretty that but and of course i have a little bit of a heart for it so uh okay i think that's everything on that so I just realized that I suggested earlier that we kick the policy down to the end of the meeting. And okay. we, I don't know if we need to, if we want to, how we want to handle that. It would be awesome if we could just finish this up. <laughs> Travis, I think you were the only one with kind of sticking points on the policy thing. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, you guys can move forward if you'd like with those. Is the only sticking point that um, of the last two. I think he tells that we should leave the whole sentence as it is currently. Okay. With the strikeouts or not? I think he wanted to leave yep. it written as a complaint is presented under public input. The board may vote to include the issue on the following agenda. So, I suggested just leaving it the way that it's currently written in KE, not making any changes to KE. But you guys can move forward with the way you would like it as well. It's fine. So the other proposed change would be to take off public concerns in the title and just, just have it say concerns and complaints. Yeah, so just remove the word public. I don't like disagreeing with Travis, but I do think that the proposed suggestions make it a more clear statement. And I don't think it takes anything away from it. So are you talking Sorry, about Travis. the word public as well? What's that? Title? Are you talking about the word public in the title? Right. We take the public out. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, that's my suggestion. And then the I think we just have to choose between the two, which is either we leave it as is without the strikeouts or we leave it 
with the strikeout. So the complaint should not be presented or accepted under public input. There's one version. And then the other one is complaints and should not be presented or accepted. But, <laughs> yes, if it's presented under public input, the board may vote to include the issue on the following agenda. Yeah, I think your the edits as presented here. I think I'm going to are clear. Yes. Okay. Kind of conflict. So, do we go back to the fact that there wasn't already a promotion on that? Um, I don't know that we had it. Yeah, so we're getting the word yeah. public yet. I was just trying to we didn't have a second. I don't. So, so I, I don't know. We didn't have a second. No. So, yeah, yeah, I think we just went into discussion. Oh, okay. So. We made the motion and all the I did too. And then we had discussion. Well, I thought, I thought so now do we just, <laughs> now are we just voting? Or do we need to make another motion? I think if you. So you, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna make changes to the last two, you can't say as presented, you okay. have to you have to make the changes so I say think, as amended. I don't think that uh, we had taken out the word public yet when we nope, so let's right. do amended. Yeah. Okay, so I would like to make a motion that we um, approve these policies as amended. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And so let's vote. Yep, let's vote. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, okay, sorry. All those in favor? Travis? Hold on, I gotta switch back. Yep, yes. Okay, okay. Thank you. So, okay. So, we have no other public input, correct? Yes. So, somebody want a motion to adjourn first, and then we'll go this. I'll make a motion to adjourn. You, you can't make the motion to adjourn if we're going to continue our meeting. Sorry, I thought you just said. to order Bloomfield Hill Schools Board of Education meeting. Today is Thursday, November 18th, 2021, 6.30 p.m. Uh, John, can you take attendance, please? All board members are present. Okay, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, agenda item two is public comment. Shapri Palatier. Good evening. Do you want to read the statement? Let's see. Uh, do you mind if I read our public okay. comment statement? Okay. Um, these are our guidelines for public participation at board meetings, limiting ta the time any individual may address the board, um, requesting individuals who wish to address the board to identify themselves, their address, and any organization they may, may represent, advising the public that generally the board and individual board members will not directly respond to comments or questions that arise during the public participation portion of the meeting, mm -hmm. requiring individuals who wish to address the board to direct their comments to the entire board and not to individual board members, the superintendent, other school district employees, or members of the audience prohibiting behavior that is intemperate, abusive, or discourteous, or that otherwise interferes with the orderly conduct and timely completion of the board meeting, excluding from the meeting an individual who engages in conduct that constitutes a breach of the peace. Thank Madam you. President, um, just to note, it's, uh, you have three minutes each. 
and I'll be keeping time. Thank you. I, so my question is for clarification. I'm supposed to state my address? Is that uh, what you're saying? It, 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 it is. Okay. It's, it's optional, though. All right. So I'm Shapri Politeer. I live at 1651 Hunters Ridge, Bloomfield Township, right next to the Fox Hills Preschool. Um, and I stand before you as a parent in a district. So we're all aware of what's been happening in our district over the past two weeks. And as parents, my husband and I have elected not to send our children to school because we do not feel um, that proper safety protocols have been put in place. However, today I was at the school in the afternoon and I did notice an increase, what appeared to be an increase in police presence. But I did not notice that this morning. So my question is, is that something that the district has put in place or was it ha happenstance? If it is something the district put in place, can it be communicated to parents so that they feel better or feel like their children are being protected? Um, and is that something that can be implemented in the mornings and for at least a short foreseeable future? Thank you. Um, Anissa Madison, apologies if I mispronounced any part of that. You didn't, you pronounced it correctly. Thank you. My name is Dr. Anissa Madison. I have two children in the district. They're 10th graders at Bloomfield Hills High School. Excuse and me, I, can you bring the mic oh, down closer? Yes, thank, thank you, so. you. I have two children in the district. They're 10th graders at the high school and I had a son that graduated from the high school five years ago. I'm here to express my concerns with patient safety and what I feel is a lack of administrative response. Obviously, everything that's happened over the last two weeks is very concerning. I listened to students on Friday and on Tuesday express how they do not feel safe at school, the emotional